So the first thing I wanna do in this tutorial is actually create the exit animation for our page here. And then we can get into creating the, uh, the, the animator controller aspects that we need to create and then go into the code and manipulate those animator parameters. So let's just create a simple exit animation. Let's go ahead and create a new clip called exit. And this exit animation, all it needs to do is fade out just like this. So we wanna make sure we're recording and the first frame is going to be a value of one. Then I'll go to my 30th frame, uh, record the keys right there and set the alpha to zero. So if we simulate this animation, we can get an idea for how fast or you know the speed that it's going to be fading out at. And that looks pretty good to me. So now I'm gonna skip over to my animator controller and create a transition from my entry to my exit. Now I need to create a parameter so I know when to hit that transition and this parameter is going to be called exit and that's going to be a Boolean. Now I wanna click on this transition and I wanna make sure that has exit time is set to false. So this means that if I want to exit or if I want to turn off that page, I'm not going to wait for my entry animation to finish before I do it. So has exit time is false and the only condition that I need uh, to be true to enter this transition is for exit to be true. So if the exit parameter that we just created up here is true, then we know that we can enter this transition. Now I want to have sort of a pit stop uh, rest animation state for going between exit and entry because of course we need to get back to entry somehow. So I wanna create an empty state called rest and I want to create a transition from exit to rest and from rest back up to entry. Now remember, we're not actually going to be reinstantiating this page, so coming from entry isn't going to be a viable option uh, anymore. So again, we won't ever be hitting this transition uh, after we start running the game. So we have to go through rest and then back up to entry. So going from exit to rest uh, is going to require a condition where exit is equal to false. And when exit is equal to false, then we know we can go up to this rest state. So I, uh, I actually, what we can do is say, if exit has exit time before it goes to rest, then it'll automatically go to rest uh, before, before transitioning. I'm sorry, it'll, it'll automatically go to rest before we, we need to set exit to false. So we can actually get rid of this condition. So in other words, we don't need a condition going from exit to rest. Uh, all we need to say is that the transition has exit time. So we're going to wait for the exit, uh, exit animation to finish and then we'll go to rest automatically. Now, if that's true, then we do need to make sure we have a uh, transition state from rest to entry, and that condition is going to be if exit is equal to false, and we don't need exit time on rest. So I believe that that's going to work for us. Let's go to code now. Let's go to our menu controller and see how we can actually set this up to work for us. Okay, so the first thing I need in my menu controller is a reference to the animator, anim, and in start, I will instantiate that. So anim is going to be equal to menu page dot get component animator. Now I also wanna have a Boolean to keep track of whether or not my page is open at the moment. So I can have a bool called is open, set that equal to false initially. And my open page method now is going to be responsible. So it's going to be responsible for opening and closing. Even though the name of the method is open page, I don't want to change that because I want to stay consistent throughout the, the tutorial series. So here we can just say if is open. So if is open is true when we enter this method, that means that we need to close the page. So here we want to close the page. And if is open is false, whenever we run this method, that means we need to open the page. Okay, so I can just copy and paste that code from the last tutorial right up here where we actually open the page. Now close the page is gonna be a little bit different because we need to wait on a condition. We need to wait on the condition that the exit animation is finished before we actually deactivate the page. So anytime you need to wait for something to happen before doing something else, a coroutine is a good choice. So let's go down here and create a coroutine by returning an I enumerator. And the name of our uh, coroutine is going to be close page. Okay, now up here in the open page method, 
Uh, if is open, this means we have to close the page. So we can say start coroutine, start coroutine, close page. Now, anytime I start a coroutine, I want to make sure I stop it beforehand. And this is going to ensure that I don't ever have two of the same processes running at the same time. So stop coroutine, close page. This is just a personal practice of mine. Again, it's, it's just a safety measure to make sure that this process doesn't have two instances running at the same time. Now, whenever I close the page, this is what we're going to be dealing with in this tutorial. The first thing I want to do is say anim.setbool exit to true. So exit, goodness, exit should be true. And when I set that to true, it's going to take a second for the animator to actually respond to that. Uh, in other words, what I want to do here is yield return new weight for seconds, something like 0 0.15 seconds. So if I don't do this, then what I, what I want to ultimately be doing here is waiting for an animation to finish, right? So right here, I'll say while animation is running, while, while the animation is running, I want to do nothing. I want to have some dead logic. So yield return null. And this is me waiting for the animation to finish. So what I want to do here is say, wait just a little bit, just wait a little bit of time before actually checking to see if the animation is running. Because if I don't do that, then within the same frame, within the same cycle of compute, uh, this exit is still going to be false. So by the time I get to this while loop, exit will still be false and I will exit out of this while loop uh, immediately. So I wanna give the animator a second to catch up and that's why I'm, why I'm waiting uh, for this to happen. So similarly, after I finish the animation, so after the animation is done running, we get out, out of this while loop. And I want to at this point say anim.setbool exit to be false. And again, Whenever I do that, I want to give the animator a second to catch up before I do anything else. So I'm going to say yield return new wait for seconds 0 0.15. Um, now, at the very end, whenever I know exit is false, I can say is open is equal to true. Or I'm sorry, is open is equal to false, so it's not open anymore. And I can say that the button text.text .text should be equal to open. So now it should say open, giving us the option to open it. And then we can say menu page dot set active false. Okay, so this is looking pretty good so far, but now we still have this empty logic here to determine whether or not the animation is running. So there's two properties that we care about when determining if an animation is uh, busy or not. So the first one is normalized time, normalized time. The second one is, is in transition. Okay, so normalized time is a value from zero to one, where zero, so where zero is the beginning of the animation, and one is the end of the animation. So if our normalized time is less than one, it indicates that the animation is still running. Uh, to, to, to join the logic, uh, if we detect if we are in a transition, then we know that our animator is also busy. So if we are transitioning, if we're on that arrow going from entry to exit, then we know that we're in the middle of a transition and we still don't want to do anything. So here's what this is going to look like. We're going to have inside the condition for the while loop, uh, while anim dot get current animator state, animator state info, at zero dot normalized time is less than one or anim dot is in transition at zero. So here we're saying if the normalized time is less than one, meaning we're still animating or we're in transition mode. Now in the parameter lists here, I have zero that represents the zeroth layer on the animator controller. So we haven't gotten into multi-layer animations yet because those are technically uh, pretty complex and we're still on the basic level of uh, animation still. So we're only dealing with the zeroth layer. We're only dealing with that first layer. And so that's why I'm trying to get the normalized time of that first layer. So while these two conditions are true, we know that we're animating and now we should be able to go back to Unity and see if we have uh, solved this problem. 
Now I might be forgetting something, but if we are, it's no problem. We can always come back and uh, fix whatever's wrong. Okay, so back in Unity, of course, I have a syntax error. So let's go see what that is. Okay, and for whatever reason, having this slash here in front of a comment uh, doesn't work. So I'll just erase that and go back to Unity. Okay, and now it looks like the error is gone. So now let's just run and see if this is going to work, if our changes are going to work. So I'm going to deactivate the menu page and something that's neat is we can take a look at the animation uh, logic while we are actually running the game. So uh, pay attention over here on the left and you can see the current state of the animator. So I'm gonna click open and we can see that we are still on the entry animation, but we are at the end. Uh, this blue bar signifies the progress or the normalized time of that animation. So now if I hit close, it doesn't look like anything's actually happening yet. So we might be having a little bit of an issue. So let's just check a couple things. This transition says that the conditions uh, are exit equal to, equal to true. So if exit is true, we should be going to exit, uh, but perhaps that, that coroutine isn't being started. Let's go back to the script and see what's going on there. Okay, so the problem might just be that I'm never setting is open is true. So in this else, whenever we actually open the page, we need to make sure that we set is open to true. So let's go back to Unity and see if that fixes it. Okay, so I'll click open, then I'll click close. Okay, and we, this is looking a little bit buggy and I know what I forgot to do. I always forget this. Uh, if I click on my exit animation, I wanna make sure that loop time is false. Now let's press play again. So open, close, open again. I'll just do this a couple times to make sure it's consistent, but it looks like it's working. Now this normalized time looks like it's trying to loop. Um, so that might be a bit of an issue. Let's see whenever we're actually exiting. So every everything looks good, right? So if I hit open, it, it opens. If I hit close, it closes. And nothing looks glitchy on the on the actual game side, but this animator does look a little bit glitchy, so I do want to investigate that a little bit. So what's happening is it looks like it's trying to run that exit twice, uh, which makes me think maybe maybe we're not setting this parameter at the correct time. So let me investigate that a little bit and I'll let you know if I find anything. Okay, so what I found was that by getting rid of this line here where we're waiting for seconds, uh, that actually fixes a little bit of the, I'll call it an issue that I was seeing where the exit animation was trying to transition to rest a little bit too soon. Uh, it's not really a problem. It, it wasn't actually a problem, but it did look like it could have potential issues, but by getting rid of this line, it gets rid of that issue. I am going to actually bring it back just because in my experience, I know that um, waiting a small amount of time, bef uh, waiting a small amount of time before doing anything else after setting an animation parameter tends to give me the best results. So you guys can play around with that. Uh, of course, these types of things are dependent largely upon your specific situation and your system. Um, but definitely let me know how it goes. If you have questions, leave them in the comment section. Uh, but we're going to be continuing Mechanim uh, in this series. If you have any suggestions for things that we can do, leave those in the comments. But otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.